a uh, little bit of a cold. Uh, it's that time of the year. My, when the kids start school, it, somebody gets a cold and it goes through the house, and it's just one of those things. So bear with me. So big news. I did get my um, plaque that you get when you reach 100,000 subscribers, and that was really exciting. I'm, I'm happy to get this and, and really proud of it. It's funny because when I first started making videos, maybe four or five years ago, it was a little sporadic in the beginning. Uh, the opinion uh, with people I knew was sort of like, what are you doing that for? And I, I had a vision. And I have to say that I had a vision to uh, want to teach people the things I know. And uh, I think it, it's paid off. I'm really enjoying what I'm doing. There's been uh, a lot of opportunity to grow the channel and, and do more of what I really want to do uh, going into the new year. So... Um, so it's really, it's really cool to get recognized by YouTube and by you guys. And I want to thank everybody for all the nice comments because when I put up the Purple Heart, the Don't Paint Over Purple Heart uh, video, I got just a ton of really nice comments from people saying they like the long format. And I'm really happy to hear that because that's what I want to do. I don't want a lot of fast cuts and just like a project all of a sudden being done. Uh, I want to I want to show you what I know and uh, and I'm still learning so the goal is for me to learn and, and to teach to people who are just getting started and and maybe are um, uh, help them along the, their journey through making things so it's a lot of fun for me and I'll stop talking about that now what I want to talk about is a couple of questions on last week's project and so I just wrote a list on my phone and the first one was from Steve, Steve S. And his question was, do I calibrate my chop saw to get a perfect 45? Well, I do, but not often. So I'll take time, get the saw set up, lock it, and just keep the saw that way because I, I probably use that saw 90% of the time for making frames and making 45 degree angle cuts. So it's usually set up. And he had another question about the nail gun. And the question was, is there a kickback in the gun? And with the little pin nail, there's almost nothing. You really barely feel any kind of a kickback. And one of the things that I like about this gun is the exhaust for this gun is at the end. I was once working with a friend who blew his contact lens out of his eye because for most guns, the exhaust is up in the head somewhere. And you can usually adjust the exhaust to keep it away from you. But um, it's one of those things you kind of have to remember. And uh, so we were working and my friend Kirk was like, I just shot my contact, my contact lens out. And I, at first I was like, what are you talking about? And then he, he explained how it happened. And, and you can see how that would happen. So uh, yeah, there's not really a, any kickback with this little pin nailer. I got a question from Film Factory. And his question was, do I use French cleats for hanging larger paintings? If I can, that is the preferred method of hanging a painting. And about six years ago, I did a huge art project for a restaurant called Corduroy. You can Google it. Very high-end restaurant, uh, jacket restaurant. And uh, some of the work was heavy. Some of the work is on steel. Uh, a lot of the work is actually on steel. And I hung everything there on a French cleat for two reasons. One, for safety. And two, uh, if somebody's in the restaurant and bumps into it, the paintings aren't always going crooked. They'll always be uh, dead level and straight. And that's the nice thing about a French cleat. Here's a question from Chet Kloss. And his question was, did I hear you right? Did you say 35 degree angle or 45 degree angle? It could be either one. Often I'll make a French cleat on a 35 degree angle simply because I don't feel like cranking the saw over anymore. And I think 35 is sufficient. I've made um, paintings where it's 25 boxes hanging in a, in a square or a grid, and sometimes for those, I'll just use 20 degree angles. It's really, it, I don't think you need to go the full 45, but that could be, that's one of those things that's up to you. I, I, I think 35 is more than enough. A question from Jay McCray. What do you do when you have a nail blowout? When you're nailing frames together and you get a nail that blows out the side of the frame? Well, a great way to avoid nail blowouts is not to use nails that are too long. So um, for a frame, for the most part, you can get away with anywhere between, I'd say, three quarters of an inch and inch long nails. There's no reason to use an inch and a quarter nail. 
If I do get a blowout on a frame, I'll try to finish the frame, let the glue set up, uh, let the frame be nice and sturdy. Then I'll go back, clip the nail, and support the frame and try to set the nail with a nail set. And if I can set it, then I can fill it. And if it's being painted, then uh, you're usually okay. A question from Joel Alexander was, what wood do you usually make your frames out of? Uh, as far as wood frames, like walnut, cherry, mahogany, you know, the sky's the limit. Whatever the client wants or whatever I happen to have in the shop here. As far as painted frames, probably 100% of the time it's poplar. And the reason why I use poplar is, uh, number one is I have a really bad allergy to pine, so I almost never use it. And two, poplars are really nice straight grained wood. It's a tight grain and it paints really nicely. It's a, it's a great wood for painting. If I'm gonna stain a project, I, I don't use poplar. Although I did use baked poplar uh, in a couple of projects recently, but that's a whole nother story. That's a poplar that they, they heat it up and the, they do that to cook all the sugars out of the wood and that way supposedly the wood can be used outside and that's what I built my beehives out of this year and the wood is very dark. It, it can almost fool you uh, for walnut. If you're, if you're not really trained, if you don't have a trained eye, you might think it's walnut. So anyway, those are the questions on last week's project. Thanks again, this uh, award from YouTube. Uh, it really means a lot to me. I'm going to put this up in my studio and I wouldn't have gotten it without all of your comments and your shares and your likes. And um, I, I just do really appreciate it. So thank you and I'll see you in the next video.